Hello and welcome to another InventRight TV show. My name is Andrew Krause. I'm one of the co-founders here at InventRight, where we've been coaching and mentoring inventors for the last 22 years to license their products and have had students in over 65 countries. We have a very special guest and a, kind of a famous artist. Man, you're doing a lot of stuff. Artist, engineer, inventor, director. I didn't even look at my notes because the list was so long. So is that pretty accurate? You're an artist, engineer, inventor, director. Is that accurate? That, that is accurate. Um, okay. They're all pretty like general kind of career titles, but it, it, I mean, it describes where I'm at for sure. So why I have Bob Partington on here is because I want to show you some really cool ads he's done for some major corporations. The two we're going to show is Volvo and Gatorade. And it's so cool how he's integrated his inventions, or I guess you made inventions for them for the advertisement, basically. And I think that, you know, we teach our students to do a one page sell sheet and sometimes a video. So I think he's going to have some really great tips for you guys. You guys are going to be really motivated to how can you jazz up your video a little bit? You're not going to have the production value because most of you are shooting you're in your iPhone, which is perfectly fine. And we'll get Bob's opinion on that, too. Um, but how can you do your best and kind of jazz it up a little bit, make it just that much more fun and intriguing so you can license your products? So Bob, is that pretty accurate what you're doing? I mean, you're, you're doing these cool ads with these cool inventions. With Gatorade, you have the world's largest treadmill. With Volvo, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Maybe we'll do Gatorade first. How did you get into advertising and mesh that with inventing? That's so cool. Um, yeah, it's kind of a fun place where, where I've, I've like worked myself in. Um, I, I have a background of engineering and fine art. Um, and I was, I was doing these big mechanical sculptures um, in sort of the art setting, but they, they kind of lived and died in that. So um, the, I ended up doing, I was fabricating some things for, for some like commercial ad stuff and, and, uh, and then ended up directing. Um, but my very first things, uh, my foray sort of into the media world um, was was creating things for Google where I would like build like a, you know, I would shoot things in high speed, things that were really fast and they would be equated to the speed of the Google browser, yeah. the Chrome browser. Um, yeah, anyway, so that started this sort of very like practical inventive builds um, that clients would come to me for um and, and sort of you know wrap a brand brand around these really fun um yeah. inventive things you get so, paid for it too i'm assuming which is great i mean <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's i mean it's it's just another way to be able to invent and and earn a living at it so well and uh, we're not going to show it here because it's, it's a little bit long but you guys in the description you can check more video of his videos out we're going to show you a few here but you also created the world's slowest Rube Goldberg device. A lot, a lot of people listening, maybe they're a little younger, maybe they don't know what that is. But um, it's this weird mouse-like invention where things roll along and it goes here, then it goes there, and then eventually like it cracks an egg at the end or something. Chain and reaction. How, chain reaction kind of thing. How long, how long was that one? That was, that was over six weeks. Because I actually, actually had grass growing that pushed a golf ball along. That was oh the God. longest part. And you um, won, that, you won that a Webby or something for that. Didn't I you? did win a Webby, yeah. Um, cool. for, I, I forget, it was for art and entertainment or something. If you guys want to check that out, click in the description below, check out his website, check out a bunch of these videos. But let's take a look at the Gatorade video and let's talk about it. So let's take a look right now. Here we go. It's not how much you sweat. It's how much you make your opponent sweat. Fluids to rehydrate, electrolytes to replenish, carbs to activate. For those who make them sweat, nothing beats Gatorade. Okay, we're back. Well, that was cool. That doesn't look like something that was easy to create i mean that must have cost a few bucks to make that sucker <laughs> that's like... yeah um that's a nice thing is like when i was doing things on my own they didn't quite have the resources behind them um but like th they always start from a place where i'm pitching 
Um, and in this case, it was, I was the only guy who was gonna do this for real. So um, worked with some fabricators in Slovenia actually. Um, and we built the world's biggest um, treadmill. Um, so what you see in the video is actually, in, we, in, in CGI, we, we tagged another 70 feet onto it, but it was literally 50 feet long by 20 feet wide. Wow. So we had these massive rollers. We went to like shipbuilders that roll these big steel tubes for us. So we made these big rollers, made the mat. Um, but, uh, and that's the thing is I, I wanted to do it for real. Um, can, I, can I ask you a and, question? Cause I'm assuming yeah. you think something in that video and I think it's a great lesson for inventors that are making videos. You had, you know, a volleyball net, you had a basketball net, you had all this stuff. And I'm assuming you didn't glue that stuff down and it went all the way around upside down and come back. You just shot it long enough before it went back and then you rolled it back the other way. I'm assuming that's how you shot it. Yeah, I mean, that, that was interesting because there was a bit of puppetry, a bit of a bit of fakery there, like the basketball net and the soccer net. Right. Um, they couldn't go right around, but the surfaces could go right around. Sure. Um, so we had it was a real was, treadmill, but you couldn't yeah. do that. So yeah. when people like want to like show something and create the illusion that it works when it doesn't in that same way, that that's okay to do in a video. Yeah. Okay. Oh, totally. That's and and. And what, I, what I'm known for and what I pitch is things that are real and in camera, there's not like mm. CG fakery, but when you're doing things for, for camera, there's so much you can do to fake it, you know? Cause, cause often if you wanna make something work for real, you've gotta put in hours and hours and make something even more expensive, but it's only being made for right now to be able to look <laughs> good through the camera. Right. So if you have to puppet something, um, but that yeah that is or, what's you know, intriguing about your your videos and your ads is because it does it's like whoa this is real right yeah but at the same time you you still are faking certain parts of it that's just part of movie making right I mean, yeah totally and like some and you and often you don't have the time or the space to like lay something out how it how it is in your head when you watch it so you'll shoot it in little pieces and use editing to to make it look like it's supposed and, to and, and when our students are licensing stuff they don't want to be too subtle they want to be like in your face here's the benefit of the product with the gatorade one and the volvo one we're going to show you're kind of like building the brand and you're oh but you're still you're with the gatorade you're hitting home the benefit you're going to keep going right and i'm assuming because the treadmill's coming a certain way i don't know it's implying that it's going to keep you going or i, I forget what the, yeah what the what um, the benefit is there what's it, it's funny because there's so much great footage of people flying off of it, but it, it was about how if you're drinking Gatorade, you can be like doing this the other like guys are just falling off. fast moving uh, treadmill, but people who don't have Gatorade in them are just like, blah, falling off. You're going to keep um, up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was the message. And we actually, um, we, we, we trained all the athletes to be stunt people because we had them flying off. So we, we sent them all this stunt training. Um, so, <laughs> so they were certified um, to do that. But, but yeah, you're, you're right. It's, um, there are things you can do because you don't, have, you don't have all the time in the world or the money in the world to, to actually make things fold up and tuck around and you know, do everything you want, but you can make it look that way. Right. It's a camera, whether it's with an iPhone or, or with a fancy right. video right. camera. Well, let's take a look at the Volvo video because this one's really cool. Uh, let's take a look. Here we go. This specially developed peristaltic system was developed to capture energy from cars on the road using only hydraulic power. The main component of this is the mat, which contains tubes that run the length of traffic. 
The tubes are full of water, and when the car drives over top of the mat, it compresses the tubes, and the forward momentum of the car drives the water through the tubes and into our roadside system that takes hydraulic power and turns that energy into electrical energy. Okay, we're back. Wow, that was cool. So the Volvo's on the side of the road and people are driving down this freeway. As you say, you're hijacking uh, the energy from, yeah. and people have been talking about this and, and then it's charging the Volvo with that energy. Okay. Um, exactly. So it, it's, it's um, this is again, me like doing this for real. Um, and it actually escalated. It was interesting because I was, at first I was thinking that it didn't really need to work because it's for film. Um, but uh, you know, the client was like, "No, this is an this is an activation. We want this to be real so we can tell people and show people, you know, that we're doing this um, to launch this this new EV." Um, but yeah, it was. So it, I don't. It, it came from just the the thought of of stealing energy so what feels like that when you drive through a puddle um it, it made me think of like driving through a puddle that feels like someone's robbing energy out of my car so yeah. then that led to um looking at peristalsis which is like those you know blood pumps in a hospital oh. um like so actually literally pushing liquid through tubes so mm -hmm. um the whole setup started with like one and a half inch fire hose is laid down underneath a mat that was like rigid in one direction so a car could drive over and the depression where the wheels were would drive fluid through these hoses and then they would accumulate in a pressure tank so it would yeah. take volume and pressure and then translate that into mechanical and you're explaining energy. all that in the video yeah. and you're you're really pulling the viewer in and that has nothing to do directly with this new EV. But what it's saying is, this is Volvo, we're innovative. And this yeah. is a product we're even selling. But look, it's charging the vehicle. And it's just so intriguing where it's just, oh, it's just not another EV. Okay, it's an EV, so what? But yeah. it's just so intriguing and interesting. And it's showing that they're innovative without showing the actual innovation you're selling. I wouldn't recommend our students or our fans doing that for... Um, their product where they're trying to clearly sell and license the benefits of it. Um, but when you're building a brand for the Gatorade and Volvo, it's amazing. And it just illustrates your ability to wow people with your demonstration, mm -hmm. you know? And it, yeah, that resonates. And I'm, I'm sure that's what the marketing people love is, is that um, it is like a backhanded kind of salesmanship. Um, for the product and the brand, smart. right? Yeah. Um, but I, I think it, it applies in general. Yeah. Anything you can do in a video that can just tease someone's imagination a little bit and, and inspire their curiosity is, is great. I mean, if you had a new coffee maker, you, you could do something like that where you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're telling a story. You know, yeah. it might be interaction between a husband and wife or kids or the way that it works. And it doesn't actually work, but you make it look like it works. You know, now in your case, it's pretty cool. Volvo said, no, we want it to actually work, which yeah. that was cool. And that's, yeah, that's, that's really nice. So 
do you have any advice? You know, our our fans and our students, they're they're not paying a production company like yourself. You'd be awfully expensive, I yeah. think, to hire. Um, uh, although if a corporation uh, needs a, a director slash inventor, man, I, I would there's I would tell them go to you because right. he's got Sign a bunch of videos, guys. Yeah, he's got a bunch of videos on his site. Send stuff for Ford as well and other companies as well. What's your advice? for being creative, like, you know, our, we teach our, our students to, to storyboard things, like plan it out. And people are yeah. like, oh, well, he's just creative. He's not planning out. Is there a lot of planning that goes involved involved in it? It's, it's only a 30, 60 second video, but. Yeah, it, it, it's insane. Like the industry is pretty crazy. Um, it, I think just because there's so much money at stake and so many jobs. And, and so the process of, of a creative brief coming from a client, an agency, um, to me through a production company, and then I'm pitching against other people to win that job. So it's about putting together material that they can look at or watch if it's a video and create something that stands out. And who knows? Cause like someone might be grumpy and for some reason decides they don't like me or like what I'm pitching right. or, or, Conversely, they like they like it for some weird reason, or maybe not weird, just because I put in the work. But yeah, it can be like if the idea is if there's a simple, concise idea, and which I already always had at, at least you know one page of my treatment. It's like here's my approach that's going to be different. This is why I think it's cool. Or I will often do um, a video if there's something if I can make a little something and show it. And that, or at least describe, like hold something in my hand and describe it to them. Um, like I did a, like years ago, I did a thing for Google Maps and they, they wanted to, to do sort of a marble game, like a Swedish marble game as an illustration of Google Maps. And so I just had a little box. I just, I, I grabbed a little box, made a video. I was like, I like that idea, but I'm gonna do it in 3D. I'm gonna do it. Mm. I, on a cube on a six-sided cube and i'm going to put the cube on a gimbal so it's going to be this giant marble game and we're going to shoot that and everyone loved it and i just used a little box you know, you know i think the equivalent for for our followers and our students is you know let's say you got a new coffee machine you were talking about actually getting physical with it getting on video and showing them hey i'm going to do this or that and so would you recommend if people are shooting something, let's say in the kitchen, I'm just using that as an example, mm -hmm. and they're using a kitchen gadget or coffee maker, like move it around and then visualize, like yeah. oh, the, the camera would be looking at this. Okay. And then draw it on a little storyboard, you know, on a piece of paper. Okay. Scene one, scene two, actually, that, that's good advice. Actually playing with the device, thinking about it, or maybe just shooting a real crude one first and well, okay, no, yeah. I think I'll shorten that up. Because I think oh, uh, yeah. you have a very good sense of how long each scene should be, but people that have never really shot a lot of video before, they may not. So they might want to shoot it and go, oh, I should shorten that up and try it again. But would that would that work? Oh, yeah. Um, I do a lot of playing around. I always on my, I don't, I don't own a, a camera beyond my phone. So um, I'll do... Yeah, sometimes storyboarding it out is great because then you can think about the fr like how you want to show something, whether it's on a table or you're holding it or whatever, then you can plan out the shots. Um, but I always have like a piece of foam core in the garage or something so I can put a white background or um, I'll often like put a piece of tape on my phone and like stick a wire on it or something. And maybe, you know, if you're like, often you can do a POV thing with your camera where like if you want to show, if I'm drinking something, I could like wire the camera right here. So it's stuck to the thing I'm drinking and you get a really cool oh. shot of like a POV. So there's, oh. there's like a lot of fun little tricks you can do like to attach your camera to things. Um, but it's, it's cool to plan it out and have, you know, at least one or two things that are going to like be a little different, right? Well, and you guys should really go to his site and look at the other videos he's done to get inspiration because they are very inspiring. And uh, I'm going to quote one example, like we're not going to show this video, but you can watch it on a site with Ford. And you were you did a, an ad basically showing that their car could go 300 miles now, the electric vehicle, right? Which, you know, to me, I'm big on efficiency that I geek out on that. But most people, it's not that exciting. 
But so what you did, guys, you had a freaking rocket to the, to the advertisement. <laughs> he, he turned what I think it could have been an incredibly boring advertisement to being very intriguing. I was kind of on my seat the first time I watched it. I was like, what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And I, that's my, my another question for you. Can people create that? What's going to happen next? So if let's say it's up to 60 seconds, maybe 30 to 60 seconds, how do you create that? Oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? And I think with all your videos, you have a lot of impact within the first five seconds right away. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's great putting something up front like that. I mean, even an editing trick is just to do like, you know, a, like a really fast run through to tease people of what they're oh. going to see. And, and then, you know, set it and then play it out in real time. Yeah. But um, yeah, any, I don't know, th things in camera are great. And that's what we can do um you know in our on our own desk or table or sh workshop you know we we can't do cg like right. fantastical worlds and but the thing is is that i always say when i'm pitching something that's real because that's what i love to do like real in camera experiments right um i always tell clients it's like that people connect with that they connect when they can look and see something that's real happening you know, on what they're watching, they connect to it and they kind of want to see it through to the end, like with the Rube Goldberg chain reaction. Yeah. If there's any control. suspense, yeah, you want it to work. So <laughs> um, I don't know, you could you could throw that into a video really about anything. Um, add, you can, into any story, you can add, a, you know, an extra level. And it doesn't have to be as exciting as this giant, the world's largest treadmill, which is what you created there or um, you know, hijacking a freeway to get energy off of it. Yeah. But it can be intrigued. It's just gotta have a little bit of intrigue. Maybe somebody has a kitchen gadget or something. Yeah. Maybe it's a problem solution kind of scenario where something happened and the wife complains and then, oh, well, but we got this new one now, honey. We got this new spatula. Oh, you know, it, it doesn't have to be as fantastical as what you're doing. Um, you're, you're getting paid a lot of money to do these and it costs a lot of money to do what you're doing, but they can still create that intrigue. And, um, yeah. you know, and people should check out your channel too. You got a YouTube channel too, as well, right? People Ooh, I got to work on that. Yeah, there's not that much on the YouTube <laughs> it's a bit channel, of a mess. More, on the, more on his yeah. website, guys. But um, I just really, you know, you reached out and asked if you could be on the show. I'm very flattered. Um, I think just by them watching these, videos it, it's going to inspire them and you're an inventor and all our followers yeah. are inventors so it's just inspirational to see somebody fusing advertising with invention and um it's just really cool i've never seen anything like it and i'm so glad that you reached out and said you wanted to be on the show oh yeah well, it was great i love i love your show and i love the inspiration it brings um i certainly have a few things that i need to work with some personal projects some little inventions um, but uh, that I can hopefully develop into something more. Um, but yeah, any any way to be able to build and inspire and and you know keep the creative spirit flowing is just makes me happy. But you have what every inventor needs. You have the creativeness. You have um, some engineering skills, which all inventors don't need. That they just have the creativeness. No. But but you have the ability to get it out into the world. So when you did this ad, you got it out into the world. You didn't just tinker in your garage so mm -hmm. the 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 combination of art being an artist being you're a marketer too you didn't put marketer in there you said director <laughs> you're a marketer and most engineers and artists don't have good marketing skills but you do so for those of people that are engineers or artists and they see like oh i need to add that marketing i need to yeah. think about selling benefits i need yeah. to make this intriguing it might be intriguing to me but i need to make it exciting for others you know, and you, you do that in spades, you know? Right. Yeah. And then with my personal projects, I need to follow that because I do have things that, you know, I should license. Um, that's a way to go, but I have things that in my mind, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to work on the molds. I'm going to work on, you, but you know, don't need small to production. Licensing. So, yeah, so you've exactly. never really done the licensing business model. Then. I have not. It's, cool. it's super intriguing. Yeah, so, yeah, I really love that about about what you guys are doing. You can you can watch um, me ramble on Mondays. I do a whole three hour Q and A, and you can call me anytime for that. All right, I'm there. 
right. Um, thank you so much, Bob. I want to remind everybody to take care, keep inventing. If you weren't inspired with this, about with from this, I don't know what would inspire you. I was very inspired. So catch up with you guys next time. See you. Bye.